Good afternoon and welcome to Prosperous Nirvana's webinar on workplace resilience. We have a small number of people today. Um, I see we have at the moment, we have three. So we can make this uh, webinar as interactive as you guys would like. Um, if you want to interrupt me, if you have any questions, interrupt and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, because we have a small number, we have plenty of time for, for questions, for discussion, and anything that you, any comments that you would like to make, just feel free to interrupt. Um, just to get started, just to tell you, first of all, if I can ask you, have any of you been on a webinar with me before, if you'd like to put it in the comments. If you've been in a webinar with me before, if not, I will tell you a little bit about myself. But if if so, then I you, you probably don't need to hear it again. Okay, so let's get started. So just to introduce myself, my name is William. I'm a life coach, having spent several years, I haven't spent more than 20 years indeed in the corporate world as a finance director. I finally took the leap and became a life coach about this time last year. Um, I was finance director for an engineering company. And in that, in that uh, company, I experienced a lot of stress and pressure, challenges in, uh, in balancing work and life demands. Um, my wife at the time became ill with early onset dementia and was admitted to a nursing home. Uh, she subsequently died about 18 months ago. Uh, so that obviously was a major, a major challenge for me in, in the workplace and in balancing work and life. Uh, subsequent to my wife be becoming, going into a nursing home, I met a new partner and we had two kids and the challenges of work life became extreme much more extreme when the when the kids came along uh we lost one of those children about uh two years ago uh, so that was a particularly tough time for me two years ago we lost one of those children and my my second partner has been been in the hospital since then so it's been i've been a single parent trying to trying to meet the demands of being a single parent having a work-life balance as well as as well as being a finance director at that time. The opportunity arose for me then to become, uh, to take redundancy from that company. And to be completely honest with you, that redundancy was very welcome. It gave me the opportunity to do something that I really wanted to do with my life, something, something new, something much more something much more rewarding for me i wanted to i wanted to help people i wanted to i wanted to work more closely with people so i would describe myself now having having be, having left the corporate world as being in a position i describe it as being unforgettable which basically means that i try not to let things get to me i try to be who I am, regardless of what's going on in the world around me, regardless of what the challenges are, I try to, I try not to let things bother me, to think positively and bring myself to the world in a very positive, in a very positive way. So, how did I build resilience? 
what things work for me in the workplace. Well, for me, I began to, as I, as I entered the workplace in my early 20s, having qualified from college, I was quite reserved, I was quite shy, I was quite fearful. And it was only when I learned to let go of that fear, that fear of judgment, that fear of not being liked, that my, that my career took off. So that's one of the first things as I see it. And I've described that in this slide as developing self fuel, fuel goals. So these are goals that we're not relying on other people to fulfill for us. So these are goals that we can fulfill entirely by ourselves. These are end goals, they're not means goals. For example, my career was a means goal. I needed a career so that I could provide for my family, so that I could have the happy life that I wanted. The end goal was having the happy life that I that I that I wanted. The means goal was the career. So having the end goal as opposed to a career goal, having that understanding my why, why it was that I was doing things was so important for me. And in understanding that, I knew that those things were available to me, no matter what anybody said around me, no matter what feedback or criticism I got. And I'm sure you all know the difference between feedback and criticism. And that for me was so important in in developing an attitude of not letting, not letting things get me down. So in my experience, it, growth comes from three, growth and happiness come from three aspects of our life, our experiences, our growth, and the contribution we make. So if these experiences are, for example, we all like to experience a happy family. We all like to ex experience the, the fun, the pleasure of, of the things that, that, we, that we really do. It's important in becoming resilient to have those experiences, to foster those experiences, and to, have, uh, have, and to nurture those experiences. It's important to go out of our way for those experiences. But there, that's only one aspect of what brings us happiness. Another aspect is growth, knowing that we learn from our experiences, that we develop, we develop new techniques, we develop as people, as intellectual beings, as part of the planet, as part of the universe, that we grow and we develop. And that brings in the third, the third part, that we, can't, that we make a contribution to the world around us, to the people around us, and to, to, our, to, our, to, to the things closest to us, most importantly, our families and our friends. So that contribution is so important. Uh, so having self-fueled fueled goals that are bringing to us the experiences, the growth and the contribution that we want is just so, is so important. Another important part of becoming experience is the whole aspect of criticism and feedback. And if we, for me, learning to ditch the pain I, feel, I felt when somebody gave me negative criticism, learn to see it as feedback which, which, from which we grow or learn to see it as irrelevant and knowing that I am enough and that we are all enough exactly as we are. We don't need to be anything, do anything or become anything in order to make other people happy. We can decide to be happy right now, right in the moment as it is. So learning not to let in the negative criticism is what this is all about. 
people people will always be critics people will always find things to say sometimes they mean to be hurtful sometimes they mean to be helpful it's important to distinguish between feedback and criticism take on board the feedback and ditch the criticism so some daily practices then for me that i found very useful in becoming resilient and not letting those criticisms affect me. The first one was self-awareness, the, the becoming aware of how I felt, the, the, the impact it was having on me when I came across aggression, when I came across negative criticism, when I came across anything, in the, in, including the positive emotions or so learning to recognize when we feel good about something so we can we can get more of the same so the self-awareness is the first part we can't fix that of which we are not aware so becoming aware of what we need to fix and just as importantly becoming aware of what's working and what we enjoy and what we love so important uh, self-compassion is uh, to me is a superpower that um, being showing ourselves the same compassion that we would show to a friend in pain or in need can free us from the the guilt, from the from the depression, from so many bad bad, bad emotions. That letting go of those of those emotions can liberate us entirely from from what's pulling us down. And related to that self-composure, not letting, taking a moment, taking a breath between the stimulus of the, of the feedback or the criticism and our response to it. So being composed to become aware and become a, a composed to, to make the decision to be compassionate to one another, also important. But for me, the single most important thing was gratitude recognizing those things in my life that were going well, that I enjoyed. And it, no matter how dark things get, it's always, po it's always possible to find in our day something for which to be grateful, even, it's, even if it's simply the fact that we woke up this morning feeling that we could face the workplace or face our lives. So gratitude is a positive emotion and taking time to create that positive emotion within ourselves gives us bio, biophysical reaction that actually makes us feel happier and feel better. And the last part of this then is having a vision for our lives, but not just having a vision of where we want to be in six months or a year or two years or however long, but actually imagining the feeling we get when that vision is fulfilled. It's so fabulous and it has such positive effects and it allows us to see in our lives the things that are happening to bring that, to, to, to bring that vision to reality. So self-awareness, some great ways of helping you to become self-aware are meditation, and there are many types of meditation. Uh, one, of, one of them that we, we all know about is mindfulness, which works for a lot of people. And for me, something that was very positive was journaling, taking a moment to write down our feeling and what led to that feeling it generates the, it, the chemical reaction in our bodies that recreates that feeling. So it's important to journal the good things and the bad so that we can learn from both. A lot of, a lot of people emphasize learning from the negative things that happen to us. I firmly believe in learning just as much from the positive things. And this is another thing I, I refer to, um, pause 
and make the space bigger. So take that moment of composure, of relaxation. Take that moment to enjoy, to experience what you're experiencing and recognize what you are experiencing. It's so important. It's so important, and makes life so much, so much calmer, so much more thought out, so much more the life that we want. So this, to me, is is the is one of the one of the most important things we learn to respond rather than react. So the, these few slides, and there are only a few slides in this, are things that have worked for me. They're about gratitude, about um, gratitude, which I found to be the single one thing. If I was to choo choose anything in life, it would be gratitude. It would be waking up in the morning, finding the things that are we have to be grateful for and bringing that feeling through the day it makes it makes us impervious to criticism to feedback that we don't welcome and it makes us unforgettable um other things um that i would say the, the next most important thing is self-compassion and this in its biophysical reaction is almost as important as gratitude. Giving ourselves a break, letting go of the self-criticism, the self-judgment, and forgetting, or not forgetting, but deciding that the future is, is not predictable. We're not clairvoyant. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. And although we need to plan for the future, we also need to stop uh, planning as if the future is going to be a disaster. That the, there are simply thoughts, thoughts of the future are simply thoughts, and we can use those thoughts to imagine a fabulous future or a catastrophic one. And I prefer to imagine a, a, a magnificent future. Journaling, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, scientifically shown to elicit a great self, greater self-awareness and greater understanding of our emotions. So this, to me, is so important that a lot of us, including myself a few years ago, were going through life drifting from one day to the next, not really learning anything from, from anything. And trying to balance trying to balance a busy work life a busy job an international career and for me at the time it was having a, a, a wife with severely declining health and i i guess to, it would be fair to say that i was very judgmental of myself in that and it was only when I began to journal it that I, I began to see it. I began to distance myself from it and see it objectively and realize how hard I was being on myself. So journaling created the awareness, which allowed me to be compassionate to myself. I often say, and anybody who has seen any of my posts on LinkedIn will probably have seen this, it's not important what happens in life, but the meaning we put on it. Sometimes we don't know if something is good or bad. So we can train our brains to react positively. So I considered my life difficult when I was balancing a career, a busy career, and a busy home life at the same time and looking after a, a sick partner I kind of felt, felt sorry for myself until I learned to put different meaning on it that um, 
I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about the power of compassion. I learned so much about my values, about what was important to me. So learning to see it, of course, it was a bad thing that, that my wife was ill. Of course, it was a bad thing that her illness was, was not going to get better. But it was so important for me to change my attitude to it. In the beginning, my reaction was to feel sorry for myself, to let it affect my work, to let it affect everything, until I realized that even in the worst things, the worst things that happen to us define who we are as people, and it's how we progress how we change the world following that those negative things that really defines who we are. And just the, the last thing I would say is to reiterate, and, and I know I've emphasized this a lot, the importance of gratitude. It, it physically changes our brain chemistry and allows us to create a, a positive bias. It, it allows us to see the things. It allows us to see more and more things for which to be grateful for. And when things are bad, when things are negative, seeing those things, we can be, can be positive for gives us a rush of the of the positive hormones and makes us feel feel better so gratitude for me is the one message from today that i would like to go 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 i would like you to go away with be grateful for the things that you have to be grateful for and even the things that go badly seen in the in the right context and in the right in, in a positive light can provide an opportunity for gratitude. So that's my final slide for today. And um, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to hear them. If anybody would like to come live and ask their question, I'd love to hear it. Um, I see there aren't any comments in the chat, which is okay. And I see Lucy has put in a comment there. Thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, lovely to hear that from you. And I will, I run the, I just try and run these webinars about once a month. I'd love, I'll, I'll keep you informed about our next webinar and hopefully you will find it useful and enjoyable. Um, you can find out more about me on my website, prosperousnirvana.com. My message on that website is there, there is nothing you need to do, be or achieve in order to be happy now. Um, there is a free community on there that people are welcome to, to sign up for and see a lot more about me and a lot more about my message. So with that, I'll, I'll close off on the webinar, let you go and thank you for your time. <laughs>